in there and at the same time I'm going to start my stop clock. Thank you very much indeed. Now while I'm doing this, while this reaction is now proceeding and it's going to take five minutes at least and I'm going to measure it with a clock, you're going to see how this metal is starting to disappear. We're certainly not going to disappear the whole copper tube but we will disappear a significant part of it and you're going to see some pretty interesting effects and we'll investigate those. But another metal I wanted to show you and to introduce you to is the metal magnesium. Magnesium, believe it or not, was first prepared once again in this building by the great chemist and scientist Humphrey Davy. There we are. Humphrey Davy was the first person to prepare magnesium. There, I'm now going to, I'm now going to pop in my piece of magnesium in my life. And here you see it's bubbling away. The metal is bubbling away, and while it's bubbling away, there is a little bit of uh, steam coming off, some sort of effort, uh, uh, some sort of vapor you see is coming off, a uh, gas in fact, and it is getting smaller and smaller. I'm just checking my clock, but uh, we've still got, we've had one, we're, we're doing fine. So we're, we're getting coming up to two minutes there, and please in the meantime observe what's happening. There are brown fumes beginning to accumulate in our bell jar here. So the magnesium as I swirl it around is getting smaller and smaller. So the question which I am asking now is what has it changed into? It disappears, but it can't have disappeared altogether. It's gone into that liquid in there, the acrid liquid, which we call sulfuric acid. And as I see I'm continuing to swirl it around, it's getting smaller and smaller in its dimension there. And it's almost stopped bubbling almost stop bubbling and there it is you see just the last little fragment there disappearing completely now what i'm going to do is to put this to one side very shortly i'm just making sure the last little bit disappears so you will all agree with me that there was magnesium there a couple of minutes ago and now there is no the metal has been and gone but what has it changed into? That's what I'm going to ask Andres to do during the next few minutes, where he will conduct a larger experiment. Andres, can you just take me through? What have we got in the bottom of that flask? We have some magnesium granules in here. And, so and you notice the copper tube has turned to a remarkable blue color at the bottom, you see? So the copper, it hasn't disappeared, it's changed. Actually, it has disappeared a bit off the bottom there. So I am now going to place my tube here on my piece of cloth, you see, which will, which will, which will protect our bench. And the, the honest truth is, these are very beautiful tiny crystals which we've made there. But we'll inspect those later on. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to now inspect the product of what that acid has made when it's reacted with the copper. So others, now let me just think, I've got to think through carefully, please allow me, I have to just uh, make sure that everything is done with safety. What I'm going to tell you all now is when Andres lifts the bell jar, he'll be tilting at an angle, I will then take the liquid out and then he will immediately obviously put the bell jar back. During that time, some nitrogen dioxide, which has been released here, will actually come out and it will spread over here. Now, in order to minimize the effect, as I say, it's not dangerous in any way. I do this all the time. We're doing it for 60 years back. Now, it's not dangerous, but it, uh, I'm going to open a bottle of ammonia there because ammonia is a liquid which neutralizes and actually has quite a pleasant smell when it's in very very dilute amounts. So Andres can I ask you therefore to lean this backwards as, as far as you can. Yep yep ready thank you very much indeed and now back again. And there you see there's your cloud of nitrogen dioxide you see and that will very shortly be dispersed in a very very harmful harmless manner. <laughs> Yes, and you see, I'm still, I'm going to see that white smoke picture. This white smoke is the product of the reaction of ammonia with this gas. It's totally and utterly harmless, just ammonia nitrate. Now, let's then return to the essence of the matter. You see this liquid, it has a very, very dark blue-green colour. I am now going to show you some remarkable <coughs> chemical changes with this. I need to first of all pour some water in to um, approximately double the volume. And I hope you can all see, first thing is we have a beautiful blue colour has appeared. 
Now that blue color you see is called is caused by all copper compounds when they dissolve in water. It's called the copper tetraaqua complex ion. You don't have to remember the two, just remember the colors of blue. I am now going to pour in, pour in um, certain, I'm going to divide this solution into four portions. Four portions you see like this. And to each portion, I am going to add a different liquid. Or I'm going to, in fact, to the first one, I'm going to add the same liquid, but I'm going to add the liquids in different quantities. So, I'm going to start off here. This is, as I repeat, quite a tricky procedure. I have my blue solution, and I'm going to be adding ammonia solution. This is concentrated ammonia, has a very, very strong smell, but I have to say it is quite harmless if you hold it at arm's length. I'm now going to add it, and I'm going to be stirring vigorously. And please watch to see any color change. This is the important bit. We're looking at colors, color changes, to show us that's a chemical reaction. And there you see, it has gone to a beautiful green color. Can you all see that? That's a beautiful green, you see. And we say, we call this, that that's obviously something to do with copper. If I now take some more um, ammonia solution and add it in and swirl vigorously, then we'll get the green color in a minute, obviously. We're going to hopefully get the green color. And once we've got the green, we carry on adding more ammonia solution. Now, this is when it gets interesting. There's our green, you see. There's our green. But now as I add more, you notice it starts to turn milky. You notice a milkiness appearing. It is now no longer a clear liquid. It is now a milky liquid. There's a solid suspended in there. And gradually, the yellow, the green color will disappear, and it will be replaced by a pale blue color. And that pale blue color, dear children, is what we call copper hydroxide. It's a precipitate. It's a solid in there, and it's floating around and causing the milkiness to appear in there. So we move that there. And the next one, we simply add a slightly larger amount of ammonia all in one go for yet another extraordinary color change. And there it is. We now have a beautiful deep blue color. And this is called the copper tetramine complex ion. So what we've now got, what we've now got is a remarkable series of colors just produced from one element, one metal, and that is copper. Thank you very much. And now <coughs> I wanted to show you, I'm going to now close three of them will all do the same thing. And there is the second one, and finally uh, that. And so you see, that's hydrogen. Notice by give me the liquid nitrogen, please. That would be very kind. There it is. It just poured out. A little bit has come out over the top. That's very kind of you. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to freeze it to a solid. I'm just going to pour that in there. And I'm, now, and I'm going to freeze it to a solid by pouring liquid nitrogen. Now please watch carefully. As I pour it in, you will see a huge commotion. A huge commotion. And this commotion is caused by the fact that the liquid nitrogen is boiling very, very vigorously. It's boiling away because the mercury in this room is very, very hot indeed. And this will continue to boil away for quite a long while. And while it's boiling away, the, night, the mercury will gradually set to a soil. Now, I am going to leave Andres to continue topping this up. Uh, Andres, could you kindly turn on the, uh, in a second, in a second again. I'm going to leave Andres to continue topping up the, um, the mercury. It will take about five minutes to freeze solid. And I'm now going to turn to the next interesting thing about metals, and that is that you can get metals as a gas. There are three states of matter. Yes, more, more, there we are. Thank you, Andres, brilliant. And then you see, now, this, uh, we put one in each because we sometimes nothing happens. So, yes, thank you very much. Now, please what, notice the colour that the water has changed to. And we can dim the lights a little more. Thank you very much indeed. Please watch carefully as the sodium is fizzing away. There is definitely something going on. Or maybe it will just stop fizzing. We can't be oh, unpredictable. But then you see, we saw a little bit of... And again, this is a mechanical engineer's device for removing a... So give this a whack. In with that. And there you see, there is a hammer made of mercury. Would you like to hold it by the hand of my dear friend to see how heavy it is? Would you agree that's very heavy? Yes. 
Yes, thank you very much. I'm not going to pass it around because I'm in a hurry to show you, before it starts melting, how it can behave as a hammer. Now, I'm going to show you how it can behave as a hammer by mocking a nail into a piece of wood. Now, I did tell you that um, mercury has a very high density. I'm going to pop it back into there just to keep it whole. And I wanted to show a comparison here. Here I have two four-inch nails, here I have a block of wood, and here I have a conventional steel hammer. Now, the density of mercury is about twice the density of steel. It will therefore generate twice the momentum. If I now hammer a nail, please watch carefully, I'm going to hammer a nail with uh, this hammer into my block of wood. Please watch carefully how it happens. So I knock it in quite hard like that. But if I now take my mercury hammer, which has a much higher momentum, it can generate a greater inertia when it moves, let's see what happens, how this one acts as a hammer. And there you see it's gone right through. And that you see is a demonstration of how the density, a higher density of a metal can make a greater, much greater effect. If, if it might be something you, some of you might consider an invention using mercury hammers, which are far more effective than conventional hammers. Now, going back to the business of chemical bonding, dear children, met much indeed. There we go, we're pouring on our the Patara glycerol, and this is an alcohol. Notice now a reaction is beginning, it's starting to smoke. The permanganate ion is now reacting vigorously, it's oxidizing the glycerol, which is propane 1, 2, 3 trial, and it has caused it to catch fire. This is called a spontaneous reaction, and it is an, a combustion. And now, could we have the lights on? Dear children, Please look at these fantastic patterns that we have made on our filter papers. And if you can see carefully, these are spots which are both purple and green. And this is the amazing thing. You see, the permanganate, which was purple initially, has during this reaction become green as well. And this is due to the manganate ion, which I can't remember the formula, but it contains manganese in another oxidation state. This is yet another example of a wonder, and just look at these wonderful patterns, you know. I did this experiment yesterday, I thought what a wonderful piece of art this will be to photograph. So this you see, once again, to summarise, different types of... Uh, through this crystal, we called him Cambridge Terrace, he was incredibly clever. He went to Cambridge and he grew this crystal, and I finished it off a little bit. But do you know why these children were all doing this? growing these crystals, because I challenged them. I said, can any of you make a crystal like the one which I grew? See, this is a crystal which I grew when I was at Mount School between 1963 and 1965. It took me five years work. I wanted to grow it bigger, but the problem is this is too small, this container. So, a little bit of thought about crystals. Now, from a point of view of science, we use the word entropy. In a liquid, I'm going to pour a few drops of, there we are. Now, could you carefully, no hurry, no hurry by the way, There's, this is going to, uh, that's it. And now please stand back. Now please stand back. Now once it's finished, I'll ask you both to take it off again, is that okay? So, we look at it, we can dim the lights for this by the way. We can dim the lights for this, thank you very much indeed. And now we can observe it, hopefully will start steaming in a little minute and then catch fire. This, by the way, can take up to a minute or so. Sometimes we can add a drop of water which acts as a catalyst, but in this particular case we're going to leave it for a while and hopefully it will take place without the water being added. Now, while we're waiting for this to go, ah, there it is. Now, what's going to put it immediately? And now, and now watch, it's now reacting, you see. And what we've got now, inside our special container, there is a bright glow. There is a bright glow. There is a smoke which is being uh, released here. That's a smoke of aluminum oxide. And inside, very shortly, I shall demonstrate for you a piece of pure iron which has been made. Now, let's just wait for it to calm down a tiny little bit, a tiny little bit, uh, Oscar and uh, Andres, and then we'll take the top off. Now, when we take the top off, the main thing I have to tell you is this smoke is relatively harmless. So, Oscar, can we, can we take off? And lights can be on now, and Oscar, and where are you going to take it? Do you know where we're taking it? 
Okay, Oscar, you ready? And now, just gently, that's it. And now you see here, can you see, here you see, that is molten iron at the bottom. The glass has cracked and melted, and you'll be able to have a look at this later on, you see, um, in the, in the uh, afterwards. So you can see that it has took, I've actually made a hole in the beaker there, that the whole thing has melted away due to the very high temperature. We call such reactions exothermic, a massive amount of energy. We're now coming on to the final topic with a skilled operator. Andres knows exactly how much to heat it because if the vapour were to catch fire, in the very worst instance, all it would get is a flame out of the end of the flask. But with his experience, he will know when to stop heating. Now, why is he heating it? Because when you heat up a liquid, the vapour escapes. So the liquid turns to a vapour, it evaporates. So we have a high concentration of methanol vapour, which is now surrounding, coming out of the flask. Now, Andres, shall I turn it off, Andres? Or? No, 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 no. Oh, you need to heat the flask. Now, this is the clever bit. Andres has, on the end of a little wire there, that's just a dividing, a dividing, a partition from the two sides of the flask, on the end of the wire, there is a tiny piece of platinum. Dear children, platinum is one of the most expensive elements in the universe, as I'm sure you know. And platinum is being, it's used in, as a catalyst in many, many applications. Um, and he's now dipping it in. He's now dipping it in, and we will wait, hopefully, uh, we will observe a reaction. Can we? dim the lights a little bit. Hopefully we'll see. We're looking for the catalyst to start blowing. Sometimes we need to heat it a second time, but I will keep, uh, we will keep hoping that it will crash. You're going to have to heat again, or this, or will that do? We'll wait. He's going to give it another thing. Sometimes you have to heat it a set. Okay? We have to, it's got to go in pretty hot to get the reaction. Now what's happened is, what's going to happen is, the, should I bring the flask? No, got to be careful otherwise you'll set the flask on fire. So we'll just wait. I, I know that Andres does this all the time uh, with a great deal of... Now that's, that's it. it. It's working. Now, now can you see it's glowing there? That platinum is glowing, but itself it's not reacting at all. But what it's doing, it's making the methanol vapour in there react on its surface with the oxygen of the air. And that reaction gives out a lot of heat energy. It's an exothermic reaction. It's an oxidation, and very shortly you will hear muffled explosions <laughs> as the methanol vapour catches fire. And this reaction will be perpetuated for several minutes now uh, with a little dull fuzz. And now, please carry on watching this. Um, Andres, do we have the balloons? I'm now going to show for the very final experiments which we're approaching is another, now this will shortly explode by the way, so what we have here, so just carry on watching it, and I'm going to show you the, an example of the use of catalysis in um, making a reaction between hydrogen and oxygen. Now, I think that one then, and this will continue by the way, it's the most magnificent reaction, it will carry on going in a cycle for quite a long time, hopefully. Now, have we got the stick? Now, dear children, first of all, I have in this balloon here the lightest gas in the universe. The lightest gas in the universe, as you all know, is hydrogen. I'm going to set it on fire. It will burn in air. It will not make a particularly loud sound, and it will just make a dull thud. But and the reason why it will burn is because I am applying a fire to it. I am applying a lot of heat energy. And that, you see, is made, and that will make it react. So please watch carefully while you'll observe a bright orange flame and a dull thud. That will continue, hopefully, to go for quite a few minutes. So this is no catalyst, just simply heat causing a chemical reaction to take place. And there it is. That's nothing special. And now... And now... Thank you very much. And now... In this balloon, in this balloon here, we have a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. Now, the oxygen will make the balloon burn much more vigorously, and the, there will be a loud bang. Now, because there's a loud bang, I'm going to ask all the children to put their hands over their ears like this. Okay? This is for all the children. The bang is quite loud, 
And once again, this is the clever bit, children. Please listen. The clever bit is this, that I am making the reaction by heating it. I am putting energy into it, energy which we call activation energy of reaction through heat. So this will make a loud bang, I have warned you, and we shall now, and when this happens, hydrogen and oxygen make water, pure water. Please watch carefully and listen.